we are about to experience the biggest boom in human history. Awesome. Right? Hold on to your hats because this is going to be huge. And you don't want to miss this wave. This is the biggest wave. And if you, don't, if you miss this wave, the wave is going to come crashing down and it's going to bury you. Welcome to the first episode. Okay, we're going to be talking about property here. Property podcast. Property podcast. So um, I'm George Markowski, this is Christina Markowski, my lovely wife, and we're going to be taking you on a journey of property. And for our first episode, what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about bigger picture first mm. to start with, yeah. before we get into the nitty gritty of exactly how to invest and where to invest and things like that. The principles of property investing, they work. So, look, what I want to talk about is the biggest boom in human history. And that's pretty exciting. That's awesome. You know what I mean? But everyone's been saying it's the opposite that's happening. Oh, look, there's always those people out there saying, oh, the world's going to end. I mean, people with signs saying, oh, my God, the world's going to end. <laughs> Doom and gloom. Jesus is coming. <laughs> right, that sort of stuff. And um, that's just the way it is. So, basically, people throughout human history have always talked about doom and gloom. They've always spoken about how bad things are. And yeah. see, what happens is, we as humans, we've evolved to actually take notice of negative news. Absolutely, more than yeah. Right? That's why whenever they're running a campaign for politicians, the, the opposite party does a negative thing about the party that they're running against. And then everyone remembers that. Yeah, and negative news travels fast. Yeah. Where good news travels fast. And slow. sells more newspapers and things and like that. And there's a reason for that. Right, because throughout our evolution, we had to be aware of everything negative because we could have died very easily. Yeah, so it's so, part of our survival system. Yeah, and now unfortunately, our survival system is getting hijacked by the media. Mm. Right, yeah, and yeah. people are living in more and more fear. Totally. And the challenge is, there's always doom and gloom, and people saying there's going to be a housing crash, there's going to be a stock market crash, and it's going to be a crash, and blah 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 blah, all this sort of stuff, and the Great Depression is ahead of us, and oh my God, and there's so many people out there, and you know what, doom and gloom sells, it sells books, it sells tapes, it sells CDs, it sells all sorts of stuff, gets a lot of media, gets a lot of eyeballs, so the media love doom and gloom. When have you ever heard, you know, everything's fine, carry on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's people out there like Harry Dent, and he writes a book just about every couple of years saying, oh my God, this massive crash is going to happen. And everyone buys, buys the yeah, book like he crazy. And he's doing, he's doing very well out of that, you know what I mean? And when you go to people's fear, it can happen. And there's always people that are buying gold and burying it in their backyard, you know what I mean? And things like that. That is crazy. I, I, I personally know people like that, you know? Yeah. So, and they're preparing for the great crash and the big depression and the massive thing that's going to happen and i'm here to tell you it's all a load of bollocks <laughs> it's right a load of crap. it's a load of crap you heard it here first it's the biggest crap i've ever heard in my whole life recently here in australia there was a national program 60 minutes they talked about the housing crash and i actually did um i did a review of that mm. and i showed some statistics and it didn't take me long to find the stats and what I did is I showed the stats, put it on YouTube, they took it down straight away because Channel 9, they're quite a big network. Channel 9 blocked George's video. They, they put it down for copyright reasons, but we sent a letter to YouTube and said yeah. it was fair use because we didn't even have full screen. No. And all we are doing was, it was really journalism and explaining things. And yeah. people were so scared because I was getting texts and emails and phone calls. People saying, shit, I'm gonna lose all my money. Um, and there was nothing further than the truth. Yeah, you know so I mean? you did a reaction video, but also exposed the truth about everything that they were saying. Yeah, and statistics. I mean, one of the things, they said that Australia has got the worst out of the whole world income to property prices. Right. And um, if you look at the stats, out of 93 countries, we're number 77. We're not even close. We're one of the best. Not even in the top 10. Yeah, so Australia as a whole, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome, but if you live in the first world, anywhere, you've got it made. Mm. And the good thing is, even the third world is getting better, which is great, because it's important for the whole world. So this is on a world scale. And what's happening now is 
we are about to experience the biggest boom in human history. Awesome. Right? Hold on to your hats because this is going to be huge. And you're all, you don't want to miss this wave. This is the biggest wave. And you know, like a surfer, mm -hmm. like if you, don't, if you miss this wave, the wave's going to come crashing down and it's going to bury you. Right. And you're finished. So pay attention. Right? <laughs> but if you're smart and you catch this wave, you're going to catch this wave to unimaginable prosperity. Not only prosperity, but health, longevity, lifestyle. Everything you could dream of is here, coming to you. And this sounds pretty unrealistic, but it's true. Awesome. It's, almost, it's almost like the future is a genie and you're rubbing this lantern and suddenly everything you ever desired is going to just happen. That sounds pretty now, cool. Now, I know that sounds pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. And I can't contain it long, I'm going to just tell people about it. Sounds so good to be true though. Well, look, let me explain how and why, because okay. this is the important thing, because it, don't turn off yet, because you might think, this guy, what is he on, right? <laughs> What's going on? But really, um, this is very, very exciting. Mm -hmm. It's the most exciting thing in the world. So if you're alive right now, you are part of history. This is the most, most amazing part to be alive that you could ever think, right? It is... The biggest changes in the world are happening right now, all for the better too. Most of it, you know, there's some good and bad. I'm going to go through that, but it is really the best time to be born in history. So if you don't have gratitude to be alive, you're crazy because you've got every reason to be have a lot of gratitude now, mm. right? And the thing is, we got to, you've got to open your mind and start listening because the people that find out what's happening, right, and learn all the new rules. They're going to have a lot of prosperity. They're going to be doing well. Yeah. And the people, if you don't listen to this and if you don't understand how this is going to work, you're going to miss out. Yeah. And you're going to miss out in the biggest way. You're going to be left behind. Mm. You know. And uh, that's why this is important. And I'm not going to be able to explain it all in one podcast. This, this is going to be ongoing. But I really want to educate you and show you exactly what's happening. Now we're doing this podcast just for a bit of fun. Mm -hmm. But also, I think that I really, you know, we don't want to keep this a secret from people. I think people need to be educated. Yeah, totally. We need a modern day financial education, Absolutely. right? Also, what happens is if you've been listening to media, if you watch TV, you read the paper, you listen to the radio, you're brainwashed, right? And you're living a life of fear, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be. And living a life of fear is not the way you should live. And what you need to do is be educated and find out the reality of the world, what's happening. Mm -hmm. So you can live a life in abundance yeah. instead. Forget the hype, look at the facts. Yeah, because every year, Media is trying to create more and more fear to sell more stuff because it's going down. So they're having less reach. So oh. they need to push harder, yeah. right? Even in movies, what's happening is they're going more controversial. Right, yeah. And more controversial. Like 20 years ago, you didn't see anyone throw up in a movie. Now, I don't think you'd see a movie about someone throwing up in it once or twice at least. No, but, but because it's controversial. Mm. Um, because you need that shock factor. They're creating a lot of shock factor. You know, um, yeah, well, it's definitely shock factor. The, the media is saying that people's houses are going to drop by up to 40%. It's massive shock factor, and it's a lot of bullshit. That would be so scary. Like, Look, a lot of people are scared, and you shouldn't be scared. But the thing is, there is some changes coming, and you need to prepare yourself. Right. And you need to be really prepared. And being prepared doesn't mean you need to get a cellar full of food and you need to <laughs> bury gold in the backyard. You just need a modern day education to find out exactly what's going on, why it's going on, and what's happening. The only way to do that is we need to go back in time. Okay. Way back in time. Okay, so I'm going to take you a bit of a history lesson. Because we're going to go through a history lesson, and then we're going to move forward. And what we can do is we can learn what happened in the past for the future. And then, yeah, we can predict certain patterns that will happen in the future. Totally, totally. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know... These people that keep saying doom and gloom and the world's going to end and everything else like that, just stop it, okay? Because it's a lot of crap, <laughs> please, right? It's like abundance is here for us. Mm -hmm. It really is. We live in an amazing world and we really need to be grateful and create a better world together. Absolutely. So what's happening at the moment? I'll tell you what's happening at the moment. I'm very curious. AI, okay? Artificial intelligence. AI is moving at a massive pace and accelerating. Well, there's a race for AI, right? There's a massive race. We spoke about it on our podcast, yeah. Daily Truth. So um, if you want to hear more about AI, go to, go to our podcast, Daily Truth, because that's um, more than music. We've done a whole in-depth episode yes, on that. On AI. The thing is, um, so at the moment, 
technology is going for an ex exponential pace. Right. Right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get our editor to put in a little graph here to show you. Mm -hmm. But what exponential means is, um, I'll explain exponential to you, which is important to the audience anyway. You know what it means. Yeah, because some people might be listening yeah. in their car. Yeah, so I'm going to explain what exponential <laughs> means. So if I was to say, um, would you like a million dollars? Yes, or please. one cent doubled <laughs> every day for 30 days. What would you prefer? The one cent? Yes. Because the one cent doubled. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's counterintuitive because yeah. one cent doubled. On day two, you've got two cents. Mm -hmm. Day three, you got four cents. Day four, you got 16 cents. And it just keeps right? going up and up and up. And the other person's got a million dollars, right? You've yeah, got 16 cents so and you're thinking, mm -hmm. wow, four days in, I've got 16 cents. This million dollar guy, he's better off, right? Yeah. But what you don't realise after 30 doublets, that's a billion dollars. Ooh. Right? So, I'm glad I picked the one cent. <laughs> now, that's what exponential growth is. Mm. And there was a little um, saying about... It's like infinite. Going up, no. It's not infinite, no, it's exponential. <laughs> the exponential is the exact word for it, sorry. Infinite means no ending, but no, it's, ex it's exponential. Well, does it ever stop then? When does well, it stop? Uh, look, that's, a, that's an interesting philosophical question, which okay. I'm not going to get into right now, because it's very complicated. Okay. Whether it stops or something. Sooner or later, we're going to hit basic physical laws that stop it. Right. But that's so far in the future and so amazing that we don't even have to think about it now. All right. right, that's, we won't even be humans by then, <laughs> we'll be something different. So basically, it was, a, it was a, like this thing where um, there was a king and the servant performed the task for him or something and he said, what do you, what do you want as a reward? And he mm -hmm. said, I want one rice on this chessboard and just doubled every single um, square. Is that a true story? Yes, and the, there were six, the 64 squares. So. By 64, by the time the rice gets to the last square, you've got every bit of rice in the whole world. Wow. Right? So even nice. though it seemed like a simple yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's the whole world. So exponential growth is amazing. So let me explain exponential growth and how it's happened and why it's happened. There's a, there's a guy called uh, Gordon Moore. He started Intel. Mm -hmm. And he coined the phrase Moore's Law. And Moore's Law was computers every 18 months, they double in power and speed and half in price. And right. Moore's Law's been working for a long, long time. So, is it called Moore's Law because the guy was called Moore? Or yeah. did you get Moore? No, because the guy was called Moore, it's actually M double O R E, okay, not Moore yeah. as in M O R E. So, anyway, um, there's a futurist called Ray Kurzweil. Mm -hmm. This guy's a genius, he's fantastic. I'd love to interview him in the podcast, he's brilliant. So, Ray Kurzweil, he's invented a lot of stuff like the synthesizer and other things like that. And he wrote about the singularity. He didn't coin the term, but he talked about the singularity. And the singularity is a time in the future, maybe back in 2045, when AI becomes smart as humans and suddenly the whole world changes. We're not going to worry about that. We're going to worry about the time from now till 2045. Okay. Right? Because that's much more interesting and we can predict that. Once the singularity happens, we can't predict Yeah, that. well, that's the near future. And yes. also, we need to talk about how it's related to property. Exactly, that's right. So that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about prosperity and property just in the near future. So we've got exponential growth happening. Mm -hmm. When exponential growth happens, it keeps doubling. So um, our information, for example, the amount of information that humans produce now, I think every seven years, it doubles now. Awesome. Right. So you think about humans. We, it took us three million years to evolve. We had no information doubling. Then we had um, Homo sapiens 100,000 years ago, mm -hmm. right? And then information doubled. Then 2,000 years ago, we had um, Jesus, or whatever it was, right? But, Lots uh, of Jesuses. <laughs> yep. And what happened was information took a long time, and then it starts accelerating. You look at um, 2,000 years ago. So this is an interesting thing. So let's say, for example, someone from... The 1500s went to the 1600s in a time machine. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't notice any difference. Yeah. There'd be nothing they different. They think it's the same time. Yeah, the, 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 the same clothes, same everything, you know what I mean? There wouldn't be a lot of difference at all. You wouldn't be able to tell that you so were So there's not time. a lot of progression back then. Right. But if you went from the early 1900s to now, it would be like 
you're in the future. You'd be like witchcraft. What's that, that's, that's right. <laughs> see, witchcraft around me. <laughs> see, witchcraft, exactly. And what you said is brilliant because Arthur C. Clarke said any, um, it's any, any highly advanced technology would seem like magic to people that aren't familiar yeah, with that. Yeah. You know, us being able to do FaceTime and stuff like that. Yeah, totally yeah. Witchcraft, right? So, you know, because, I mean, just over, you know, only a couple of hundred years ago, they were, they were hanging people, witchcraft, burning them alive, you know? Yeah. Wow. So we've had so much progression now. Mm -hmm. So it's massive. That the one thing we've got now is massive change. And it's accelerating. Now, humans aren't used to massive change. That's really? Like, no, no, we're not used to it at all. Okay. Because usually everything was the same from generation to generation. So people are going to find it hard to adapt. Well, massive change causes stress mm. on humans, not only humans, but on animals and humans and everything. The reason being is we've evolved. When there's when there's a change, you get stressed because species can go extinct when there's change. Oh. So because is that why a lot of people don't like getting outside of their comfort zone? Yes, people don't like getting out of the comfort zone because it's not comfortable. The reason it's uncomfortable is because they don't like change. Mm -hmm. And we've been, so we're, we're interesting because we're omnivores. And omnivores have got a bit of curiosity. Yeah. So the biggest human need is consistency, mm -hmm. which is not change, right? No, which jobs are. The next, next biggest, biggest thing is, is inconsistency, which is change. <laughs> so we can handle change only when everything's very consistent. Yeah. The challenge is now because everything's going so fast. There's a lot of underlying stress for people with change, right? Unfortunately, you've got to just embrace it. There's nothing you can totally, do. Totally, no right? point getting upset so about it. So a lot of people don't like change. They want to keep everything the same. And, you know, you see them posting on Facebook and everything. They want to keep everything the same. They want to live in their little bubble. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. You know what I mean? Like I saw a post recently, right? And this is an interesting post because it's a, this is part of what's happening in the future. So at the moment in supermarkets, they've got self-checkout, mm -hmm. right? And it was post going around going, oh my God, self-checkout, our kids and everyone went at jobs, right? And what they're doing is they're saying, don't use self-checkout. We want to get a human to do it. How fucking stupid is that, right? So they're now, like the Luddites. They're, they're like the Luddites, exactly. Yeah. Now, I'm actually all for change mm. because you can't stop it if you like it anyway. It's like getting a broom Your and trying to stop it. kids will have to get a better job. Not that there's anything wrong with checkout. Like, no, I no, just no. Do nothing wrong with that. However, however... <laughs> So if most jobs are getting taken by robots and AI, so you better get used to it. Mm. Actually, um, by 2020, robots will be doing more than 50% of the work of humans. They're gonna find more robots gonna be working than humans in manufacturing. Isn't that amazing? And then finally Huge. robotic beings will rule the world. <laughs> <laughs> so, so robots are taking over whether you like it or not. But yeah. don't be afraid of this. It's actually a huge opportunity. Because in China, crisis and, and opportunity are the same symbol in Chinese, right? So when there's change and crisis, there's opportunity. Mm. And this is the biggest opportunity we've ever had. So instead of burying your head in the sand and being a Luddite, and instead of going, oh my God, the world's gonna end and we lose our jobs and everything else like that, Let's look forward to what you can actually do about this, mm -hmm. right? Because how can think, we use this to our advantage? Exactly, <laughs> that's right. And I'm going to be talking about first. I'm going to talk about why change is happening in this podcast. Yep. We're going to go in and how to use it to your advantage, definitely, because okay. that's the important part. And I'm definitely using it to my advantage. Like technology has made my life so much better because we're using it. Yeah. And imagine all the stuff that we use for technology. It's great. For example, I mean, getting this message out. It wasn't the technology, I couldn't do it. No. You know, I'd have to stand at a soapbox back in the old day and go, hey, everything's fine, everything's good, everything's going to lose. Or we'd right? have to write the note and send it by carrier pigeon to everyone. I'll put it in a hole <laughs> and chuck it out there, right? But yeah, so the good part is um, with, communicate, with more communication, everyone gets more educated and it's better. So what's happening is almost half the world is online now, right? And now another several billion people are going to go online. But also there's a lot of people making money online. Heaps of people, but there's going to be more people going online which is going to create more... Democratisation. That's right. So um, there's Peter Diamandis, right? Who's a futurist. He talks about the future and I've got a lot of these ideas from him. You know? Right. And um, what he says, I'll get it out so I don't get it wrong. Let's get the quote right. Yeah, because what this is what he's talking about and he's, he's totally right. 
you know, I like, he talks about the six Ds, right? So he says, the chain reaction of technological pro progression. So everything's getting digitized, mm -hmm. right? That's one. It's very deceptive because of the exponential growth. It doesn't look like it's doing much. And then suddenly, it's slow. Yeah. yeah, slow at the beginning. It's disruptive. Mm -hmm. It's demonetized. Yeah. Dematerialized. That's a big one. And too. democratized. Yeah. yeah well, now we're going to go through and talk about the six Ds and explain how it works in our world and how you can take advantage of this. Because it's very important. And how it's linked to property, prosperity? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, property prosperity is one of the amazing things happening in the future. We're about to have the biggest property boom in history, ever. Because of the six Ds. That's right, because of the six Ds. Awesome. Right? And the reason being is property doesn't really get affected by the six Ds, like anything else. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. You can't dematerialise it. No. You can't digitise it. You can't digitise <laughs> no. it. You can't democratise it. You can't do any of that, right? Yeah. So, so th this whole revolution. So, let's say I'm going to talk about information. Okay. Information is exciting. So, back to the old day, Encyclopedia Britannica. What Encyclopedia Britannica did, they paid all these experts in different fields, lots of money, to write about the expertise. And they put it in a big book and published it. It cost a lot of money to put together. And then they sold it to people. It was like two or three thousand dollars for the set. Right. right. So you had all the information at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. What's happened now? Wikipedia, right? Google. Wikipedia. Don't know Wikipedia. That's more of a. Oh, yeah, that's so more Wiki of a. Wikipedia is the new Encyclopedia yeah. Britannica. Yeah, exactly. Right? Wikipedia. But yes, Google is as well. Yeah. Totally. I totally yeah. understand. Yes, you're right. Mm. So we're both right. But let's talk about yeah. Wikipedia. <laughs> um, but Wikipedia and Google, I'm going to put both of them in there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're free. Wikipedia was made by volunteers. So it costs nothing to build. It is infinitely bigger, so much bigger than Britannica, so Encyclopedia Britannica, more up to date. Mm. Yeah, more relevant. Free to access, yeah. quicker and easier, right? Yeah. So what happened? It got digitised. Demonetised. Demonetised, democratised. Hello. It actually, all the 16s apply to it, right? When you think about it. Wikipedia, digitised? Mm -hmm. It was deceptive. No one thought that Wikipedia was going to be bigger than Encyclopedia Britannica. It's disruptive because no one buys Encyclopedia Britannica anymore. They don't that, need no, to. Can I just say whatever happened to Ask Jeeves? Um, I think he's still <laughs> around. And it's demonetized, dematerialized because you don't have a physical book anymore. No. It's much quicker. Mm -hmm. So what's happened is we've got something a thousand times better. Yeah. Because imagine trying to, you have to buy the encyclopedia or store it somewhere, you've got to physically go there. But now I've got my tablet and I can get it anywhere in the world for free and quicker. As long as you have Wi-Fi. Yeah, so I can, I can just type it in and do it. <laughs> Wi-Fi is becoming ubiquitous now, mm. right? Pretty soon they're gonna release 5G, the whole planet's gonna be connected through Wi-Fi. Cool. Completely and utterly. And very fast too, it's gonna be amazing. About time. So, um, so that's what's happened with, it, with um, such a big, such a massive business yeah. like that. And, and so now is um, Encyclopedia Britannica, is that like worthless now or, or pretty look, much? Good question. But, um, <laughs> or do like people collect it because it's so old school and rare? I, I reckon people collect it. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Everything has a niche. Yeah. Mm. Keep talking. So how's this related to, I guess, property? How, how's property? Oh, okay, so... Well, is it because it's the opposite? It can't... Yes, property's the opposite. So what happens, is, what happens is, okay, so what's happening is TVs, right, now. Yeah. What happens every year? They get bigger and cheaper. That's right. What happens to phones? They get smaller they get and cheaper. They get smaller and cheaper. cheaper. <laughs> nah. Uh, um, clothes, 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 cheaper. Yeah. Everything. Mm -hmm. Every consumer we can think of, what happens? They get cheaper and... And better. Especially like food. Like we used to have a food deficit and now we've got an oversupply. There's way too much food. Yes. People yes. eating way too much. Yeah. So but let's talk about material possessions. Yeah, yeah. Every material possession is getting cheaper. Mm -hmm. Cars. Yeah. Everything. We're not gonna talk about food because food's slightly different. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not quite the category. Yeah. But um it will do. It will be there, not at the moment. Mm. So what's happening is everything's going to be materialise and cheaper. Cool. So because yeah, look at the furniture you can buy from IKEA. Yeah. So if you look at it's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
and you can put it in your house. <laughs> Let's start this again anyway. Sorry, because we've lost the point completely. Uh, so we're talking about how it's the opposite to property. Yeah, so what happens, okay, because everything's cheaper, mm. people got more money to spend. And there's more available. What's more available? Like... Not property. No, no, I'm talking about, um, you know, clothes and... There's more of everything. Yeah, yeah. Now, what's happening is, I want to try to catch this in one sentence, so mm -hmm. let's let's cut this and start again. <laughs> no, because we're just going off, bouncing backwards and forwards off the topic. Oh, it doesn't matter, um, at least we're talking. Like, yeah, exactly. Okay. So, <laughs> What's happening is the reason property goes up is because mm -hmm. of scarcity. Right. Right? That's why. But there's another part of the equation. What's that? Discretionary spending. How's that linked in? Oh, how's that linked in? Okay. okay. So, for example, a hundred years ago, a big part of your pay went to food mm -hmm. and items. So, you didn't have a lot left for housing. So housing couldn't go up in value much because you didn't have much left over to buy it with. Right. Now everything's so cheap, you've got more to spend on housing. Therefore, housing goes up. Okay. Right? So as every item gets cheaper, what's going to happen to housing? But houses are also more expensive. That's right. Because everything else is cheaper. Right. So the, the, the whole... If we look to, uh, cut this, let's try it again. <laughs> this whole exponential growth yeah. and the materialization, the monetization, everything else, mm -hmm. because everything else, everything's becoming free yeah. or cheap, the one thing that's going to go up is property. And property is just going to keep getting more expensive. It is, because everything else is cheaper, so people want more discretionary spending to spend on. So, as this goes down, property is doing this. Mm -hmm. And you can see over the last 100 years what's happened to property. Yeah. It's averaged around 9.2% compounding in Australia over the last 100 years. Right. Right? So 100 years ago in Australia, everyone worked on farms and producing food. Mm -hmm. And then we had this massive industrial revolution where people moved into cities and did other things like that. Mm -hmm. And what happened is the industrial revolution gave people more prosperity which pushed property prices up because property became more valuable. So now the only one thing left that can't be affected by the six Ds like everything else is physical property because it's physical. Gotcha. And also obviously the land that the property's on. Well, that's physical as well. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> and there's only, there's, with land, there's only a certain amount of land in this world. In the world, yeah. And you cannot change that fact. Yeah. But information, we can double that every seven years. And as we, the population increases, um, yeah, people are going to take up more and more of that land, obviously. Yes, so but... it's going to become more scarce. Yes, it's going to become more scarce, but there's only one scarcity of land. So if, you, so if you can own property long term, that's the one thing that's going to have value that grows. Mm -hmm. Right? Because yeah. the challenge is, you know, if you have shares... Shares are very complicated, but you know, if you had shares of Britannica, Encyclopedia Britannica, guess what happens? Suddenly, bang, something new comes out. Mm. If you had shares in a taxi company, then Uber comes out. Yeah. If you had shares in a hotel company, then suddenly Airbnb comes out. So yeah. what's happening is there's a massive disruption and all these big companies and everything else like that, they're getting disrupted mm. and destroyed. And it's a good thing because we're becoming more efficient. And less is going up to the top, and it's more democratised, it's better for everyone. But essentially, everything's going to be free in the future. Everything? Just about. What? So, okay, energy, right? Yeah. Energy is going to become free. Woohoo! <laughs> Manufacturing. So, what's going to happen is in, in the near future, all these new robots and AI, that's going to create a lot more jobs. We've actually got more jobs coming. You know, people were worried um, once, you know, you know, when you are, uh, when they got rid of horses, you know, mm. they were worried that cars, you know, you know, the blacksmith would lose his job. But the what about people that have only got a certain skill in the job that they're in right now? How are they going to have another job? Okay, you're going to have to upskill yourself. You have yeah, no choice. Yeah, so that's so a big part the, of the, the key. The, the, the big part of the key is you really got to learn and become more. 
Mm. And the big part of the key is we're not going to have a long career like we used to in the old days. We're going to have to chop and change. Right. So what's going to happen is we're going to be hybrids more. We're going right. to be working with robots and AI together as a team. Mm -hmm. So you look at factory workers now, they work with robots. Oh yeah, you can get a job repairing the robots. Well, they work with robots too. But you look at... um, um <laughs> well, no, no, New job for people. We're actually... You've actually nailed it. Um, programming, <laughs> produce the robot, repairing the robots, keeping up. The Go strength. study computers. <laughs> well, you look at you look at the U.S. Army. Mm -hmm. They've got drones now, but yeah. there's takes a team of people to actually use a drone. Yeah. So if you want to future proof your career, um, go study computer programming right now. <laughs> no, no, that's it's going to be obsolete by the time you finish. Really? Completely obsolete. Oh, because it keeps upgrading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't have to program stuff in the future. Going to be different. Well, they robots probably AI will do it themselves. themselves yeah. no, but what we need to do is we need to work. So, so for example, what's happening now is a massive change. I want to talk about chess, for example. So, with chess, um, we we thought computers could never beat a chess program. I mean, computers could never beat a person. Yeah. And then Deep Blue beat Gary Kasparov, mm -hmm. right? And that was the new sort of level. Yeah. And then what happened was they thought Go, which is much more complex, a computer could never do that. And then Google created the What is program. Go? Is it like a board game like chess, but like that, but a lot more complicated. Lot Chinese, more strategy. very, very, yeah. very hard. Okay. And then um, Google created a program that won Go worldwide. Mm -hmm. Then they created an AI though that taught itself for only for a few hours to beat the top program. And this program can beat any other chess program too after one hour of teaching itself. So AI is getting smarter and faster, very, very right. fast. So if AI can program itself now in one hour to become a chess master, imagine what it can do in 10 years' time. Yeah. Huge, right? So now, though, this is the interesting thing. So computers used to beat humans, mm -hmm. but now computer people, teams, can beat computers or humans. So hybrid. Yeah. yeah. So you get a human and a computer together, they're much more powerful than one on its own. Is that because humans are more flexible with their thinking? Must be. Uh, funny yeah. enough, funny enough, um, computers are more creative when it comes to chess. Right. Funny enough, and that's how they can pick if a computer's on the cheating computer. If oh. they're very creative. Okay. But for some reason, the human and the computer together work better. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen now is a lot of jobs mm -hmm. are going to be robots and humans, AI and humans. We're going to be working together. And we're going to be part computer too, like cyborgs to upgrade. Not at the moment, no. No, no, in the future. Yeah, but what I'm talking in the near future, we're just going to yeah. work together. So what's going to happen is they've got a new new robot that flips burgers and hundreds at a time. Mm -hmm. But you, you still need someone, a human there with them because the robots are still not that smart. Yeah, you could like throw them on the floor accidentally. No, 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 it won't throw them on the floor, but it can't navigate a kitchen. So it can only do one thing. Right. But the input and the output has to be humans at the moment. Oh, so they have to put the product there for it. Yeah, oh, the right place. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's just the ro got one the ro action. The, 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 robots, the robot's not going to go for a walk. Right? <laughs> it's got one action. But, but it doesn't drop burgers. It's, it's perfect at what it does. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's very limited. And all AI and robots are very limited. But you'd also have to calibrate it to make sure it doesn't flip it on the floor. Yes, absolutely. And that's why you've got someone in. So what happens is um, in factories and car factories, now for a long time, robots and humans have been working together for a long time. But they're slowly replacing all the humans. It's a symbiotic process. relationship. <laughs> it, it is, it is. And it's a good thing because it makes life easier and better. So what's happening is, like you look at um, radiologists, right? Mm -hmm. They look at scans to see if you're cancer or something like that. Yeah. Now, AI can do a much better job. Plus it won't get radiation poisoning. Because it's a they're, they're looking at a yeah. scan. They're not next to radiation. Oh, okay. They're in their office. They don't, they're not actually there. <laughs> They've got a big don't, screen no, no. for protection. You, you, you go to one place, get, get scanned, and that gets emailed to his office. Oh, you're talking there. about the person reading it? The person doing it. Yes, yes. He doesn't read it. No. He just does it. He presses the button. And he's behind the uh, yeah, lead wall. Protection. So yeah, he's yeah. fine. You're the yeah. one in there getting all the radiation. The person getting it. But let's, talk, let's talk about the specialist, though. Because that yeah. guy's job's safe. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Because a robot can't do that. No. But the guy looking at the scans, AI can do a better job at finding cancer. Right. However, you still need someone to interpret it and talk to the patient about it and an expert in it. So what's going to happen is going to be hybrid. 
-hmm. but they're going to do a much better job than what they're doing. Because they'll be more accurate? Much more, much more accurate. Yeah, AI is much more accurate. Mm. So the beautiful part about it is these AI and robot human hybrids are going to do a much better job Mm -hmm. because uh, AI can scan millions of databases and with the right expert with the AI, you can really interpret things and people's health is going to get much better. Healthcare is going to get better. Science is going to get better. Everything's going to get better. So you name it, we're going to have much better. So our, if you, in 20 years time, when you look back to now, mm-hmm. and we look at the pharmaceutical companies, and we look at our medical system, mm-hmm. it's going to be a joke. We're going to be like, oh my God, I can't believe they used to do that. The way we think about what we're doing now will be like the way we think about when how they had people leeches. used to put leeches. Yes, that's yes. right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> or like they used to drill a hole into their head when they had a headache to try and relieve the pressure. Totally, totally. So they thought. <laughs> they, they, they still do that. Are you serious? Yep. And still do that certain, with certain things, absolutely. So um, we are about to have unprecedented prosperity. Yeah. Now, this is the thing. Let's talk about when people retire. 98% of people retire broke, mm-hmm. right, here in Australia. Yeah. And it's probably worse than other countries. We're in a very prosperous country, right? Yeah, that's so, crazy. So, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. And so there's three solutions to that, right? Mm-hmm. One, get a plan of action and actually create more wealth. Yeah. Two is reduce your lifestyle, eat baked beans every day. Yeah, so the And the third one, no, no, that's, uh, that's, uh, the one you just said. And then the third, the third one is die is, sooner. Yeah, die sooner. <laughs> now, I, I've got some bad news for you. All good news, I think it's good news. You're actually going to live longer, not die sooner. Yeah, so. So this whole thing, retiring at 65, I think they've changed age now in Australia. Yeah, I think it's like 70. Yeah, I think it's 70, but. That's going to change again. Anyway. Yeah, of course it is. It's going to go up to 80, then 90. If you live the next 10 or 15 years, yeah. you're going to make it 150. Awesome. Right? Mm-hmm. So being 50 or 60 these days is not like what it was 20 years ago or 30 years ago. It's hugely different. So we're going to live a lot longer and a lot healthier. So because we live longer, people need to even pay more attention to their future. Because in the old days, it didn't matter. But also, I think you need to start planning for your future. Absolutely, that's what I'm saying. So what used to happen is when they made the retirement age 65, and then people used to retire, and then two years later, they'd die. Oh, so you didn't, right. you didn't yeah, need... You didn't have to plan. There wasn't a lot of planning going on yeah, yeah. for two years. Who gives a no, shit? Yeah. But now, we're going to live a long, long, long time, which yeah. is awesome if you're into longevity, we're trying. Mm-hmm. So you really need to plan ahead. Because it's not one or two years. It's going to be a long time. And you don't want to spend a long time in poverty. But you don't want to have to keep working either as well. No, not at all. So that's why it's very important to invest. Oh, in absolutely. You know, if you don't invest, you're going to end up like the 98% of people that retire dead broke. That's right, exactly. And we can't rely on superannuation. The average super lasts six years. So in Australia, in Australia, yeah, yeah. in Australia, in the last six years, which is not mm. long at all. Um, so what's happening is things are changing very much. And because I know a lot of people are going to go, oh, where did you get the, that information about superannuation? Go on, go on Google. Go or ask look, any financial advisor and they'll tell you the same thing. I've been told this by several financial advisors. Totally, totally. The, the fact of it is you're going to live a lot longer. Mm. You're going to be healthier. Everything's going to be better. However, property price is going to go up because everything else is cheaper. Right, yeah. So that's gonna be the big challenge in the future because we can't create any more land. Mm. It's just impossible, you can't do it. We can, we, can, mm. we can solve everything for that. My mind sort of goes off on a tangent when you say you can't do this and you can't do that. And I was just thinking of, you know, like in water world, how they're like trying to create land. <laughs> Look, um, we may possibly do that in the future, but it's gonna be very expensive. It's gonna be very start. difficult. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we've got a lot more jobs coming. We've got a very low unemployment rate at the moment, which is going to go even lower, right? Wow. Um, Wouldn't gonna... that mean more poverty for people, though? Less okay. employment, more employment. Oh, I thought you were saying that more people are going to become unemployed. No, no, no. No, less... no, you're saying the employment rate's going down. Going down. Means more people will be employed. Gotcha. Yes, no, employment rate's going down because yes. with all this new technology, it's going to open up whole new industries and whole new things. A bit like how people can do Uber now or Airbnb totally, their totally. house and create so, more income. So the ability to make income now yeah. because of technology has changed. And what's happening is, and that's why I like residential real estate compared to commercial. Mm. 
Because commercial real estate's dying. Because you don't have to go to a store. To this buy will be a whole room. other podcast, though, when we talk about um, commercial versus residential. Totally, I think totally. we could just do a whole. We could do a whole thing, yeah. That. But yeah. The, the world's changing, and yeah. you don't you don't need offices like you used to. No. Office space is one of the things that's going to disappear. Mm. Because people can do meetings over Zoom now or over the phone. Yes. So. Um, offices aren't that popular anymore. I mean, I haven't had an, I haven't. We got an office. Yeah. But we we go there what once a week. Yeah, part time. I, I, I do anyway. You go more often than I do. Yeah, because I, I coach people Australia wide, so majority is Zoom. Yeah, a lot of Zoom, not but, majority. Yeah, I'd but, say probably fifty percent. Yeah, and then yeah. sometimes you just, you meet them in the office. Yeah. But really, we've used the office less and less. Yeah. I mean, totally. me, I hardly ever go to the office. I'll work at home. Yeah. I like to look at the beach when I work and just relax. And, <laughs> you know, no, but I do. You know, I'll work in my sauna. Yeah. You know, I'll be on the iPad mucking around. You can work anywhere these days, where you could oh, in the yeah. past. In the old days, there was no way I could work in a sauna or at home. My iPad does get to be hot after a while. If someone could tell me how to keep it cool, the sauna would be great. Because <laughs> it just stops working after about half an hour. <laughs> so, get ready for the big boom ahead. It's going to be huge. It's going to be humongous. And property is going to go up. And we're going to have more prosperity. And we're going to be able to do things. Mm -hmm. And if you can just get yourself a number of properties and hold yeah. the right price and have them long enough, you're going to do very, very well. Awesome. You know what I mean? It's amazing. You know, also here in Australia, the population is growing. They're three times faster than China. Yeah. So it it's pretty amazing. So don't worry about any of this doom and gloom stuff. Mm -hmm. We are really in for very big times, a lot of prosperity at the moment. It's very exciting. Cool. You know? Obviously, so buying property um, with land is a key to how you can get the prosperity through owning property. It, it doesn't necessarily have to have land component. Okay. However, it does need to have be scarce. Right. So a lot of people confuse land and scarcity. But it's mm. not the same thing, right? Yeah. So land doesn't necessarily mean scarcity, but scarcity does mean it's going to go up in value, but not land. Right. Okay. But sometimes scarcely land the same thing, if you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Right? So if I, you know, buy something in the middle of nowhere, that's land. So when is this boom happening? Is it happening right now? Look, the boom is happening right now as we speak. Right. Right? Right now as we speak. You know, you've got to jump on that wave. And the thing is, what's happening is it's just slowly going up, right? Yeah. So you don't even notice it. Yeah, beginning. a bit like the one grain of rice. That's right. You, get not, two, you, don't, you, even get notice, you don't even notice it. Yeah. And then yeah. before you know it, it's just going to skyrocket and just go nuts. Right. It'll go crazy. And because what happened was land prices didn't do much at all. Mm. And then the Industrial Revolution came along and everyone became more wealthy and then they went up. So now that same thing's going to happen. So you look at um, San Francisco, that's near Silicon Valley, that's gone through the roof. Because of the whole, the, the whole, you know, AI revolution and the whole right. information thing, yeah, yeah. so that's going to affect the whole world sooner or later. But in the first world first, and then in the third world, so there's going to be a sort of several waves of this going on. I think a lot of people's biggest concern is actually getting into the market because getting into the market is probably one of the hardest things you can do. It's very hard. We're going to because go through that. We're it's going to go so expensive to actually buy a property these days. Look, if you think it's expensive now... Yeah, yeah, I right? know, I know. <laughs> Seriously. In the future, it's dirt it's, cheap. you're going to look back and go, oh my God, it was so cheap. The, the, pro the problem is... But how much did your parents buy their first house for? How much was okay. it? Okay, $2,000. $2,000. Now, like, that house oh, now... Mind blown. I know, I know. Man, I would have so many properties. No, okay, so, property so that the, cheap. the reason property was so cheap then yeah. is because everything else costs so much. Yeah, gotcha. Right? So the people didn't yeah, have discretionary yeah. spending. $2,000 yeah. was, you know what I mean? Yeah, so now yeah, yeah. it's very different. So if you look at um, someone's yearly wage, the yearly wage went to all your living expenses. You didn't have much left over. Mm. But now we're, we're, it's very different. Yeah, you know so if you think it's expensive now, just remember you're going to look back 20 years from this day and go, oh my God, property is so cheap. Look, one <laughs> thing I've noticed, I've been investing for 20 years now. Yeah. And every time I buy a house, I look at it and think, you know, it's okay, but maybe a bit expensive, but I'll buy it anyway. Mm. Whenever I look back, I'm going, wow, I cannot believe how cheap it was. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even the house we bought in the beach. At the time, it was a stretch. Definitely. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of money. Now I look back and think, 
Oh my god, so cheap. What a bargain. What a bargain. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. Every house to Even like just going to open homes in our area and hearing the price of the properties, and these are awesome properties. Um, they're like only a million dollars, and I'm like, wow, that is such a bargain. I know. For what you get, yeah. It's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. If you put it into perspective and you look at what you would get for the same price in Sydney or Melbourne. Yeah, so. So, so we're in Adelaide, just so everyone knows. Pro property at the moment, and the, this is the thing though, okay? The biggest risk in property, let's talk about the biggest risk. Yeah. Okay? Not having any. <laughs> the better, Hello. The biggest risk in property is not having any property. Yeah, yeah. But let's talk about the second biggest risk. The okay. Second biggest the second risk. Biggest. The second biggest risk, and this is very important. The second biggest risk is rushing in and doing it wrong. And doing it wrong yeah. without oh. having a. You, you, mm. you need education. to have. A, you, need, you need to have financial education. Absolutely. You need to have the right mentor. You need to have the right tried and tested method. You need to have a method of choosing what you're going to buy and yeah. how you're going to buy it and how you're going to hold it. Very, very important. Totally. See, there's one thing you don't want to be a pioneer in, and that's property investing. Mm. Because it's such a long term thing yeah, that yeah. you've got to get it right. You need to get you it right. You can't afford to get it wrong. Yeah. Because if you get it wrong, see, it's a, lot, set you back a, a lot of people decades. Have, a lot of people have made money mm. by accident property. Yeah. They bought a property and just went up, which yeah. is great. But a lot of people have bought property and lost money too. Mm. And the key is, if you get it right, then you're safe. And the only way to get it right is by looking long term. Yeah. It's the people that want to get rich quick. You know, I've just really had it up to here with that get rich quick mentality. Yeah, like you know you're I mean? not going to make money in one year on yeah, like, property. Well, I just refuse to pander to get rich quick mentality. That's crazy. Seriously. You just, if you expect to make money straight away in property, mm -hmm. right? Then, and if you want to make money straight away, well, you're an idiot, right? That's not how the world works. No, and, <laughs> and sometimes you can. I'm not saying you can't, but really you've got to look long term because if you look long term and you look at the averages, it's very simple yeah. and very easy. And that's the way you need to calculate this. You've got to keep safe. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what I want to do, um, we're going to talk about next time, next podcast, about some of the fundamentals of property investing. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Some of the fun fundamentals that I've used. And, these fundamentals work really well for me because 2008 was a GFC mm -hmm. and lots of people lost money in property. Yeah. didn't affect me at all. And the reason why I had the three pillars and the principles and because that was safe and you can keep safe in any, any sort of market yeah. and really keeping safe is the most important thing. Because what you want to do is you want to future-proof your investment so that it, it's okay no matter what happens in the future and what happens in the economy, you're going to be totally fine. That's right. And part of future-proofing is you look at what happened in the past and try to work out what's happened in the yeah, future. And predict. the future is bright. So bright, I'm going to wear shades. No, seriously. <laughs> this is oh, my God. He's putting on sunglasses right. for no, the no, people that are listening yes, to the but, audio. But look, seriously. <laughs> The future's very bright and for some of us. Look, the fact of it is, it's very exciting. Um, and if people jump in this wave, they're going to do so well. Yeah, awesome. You, you wouldn't even imagine how we're going to do. So just going back to what I said before, okay. I mean, I, I honestly else. think we could probably do a whole podcast on it, um, on yeah. how people can actually get started. Because I think that's one of people's biggest challenges look, is actually realizing that they're in the position to start first of all because it's a bit of a mindset shift it's actually a massive mindset shift and having the mindset to actually see yourself as an investor and invest and actually get into investing in property it's not easy totally so look what you're saying you hit the nail on the head mm. brilliant i love what you're saying the it's biggest fantastic. thing that holds people back is not realizing that hey i actually earn enough and I actually can do it. Well, this, this is the thing, this is the challenge, right? What happens is in circuses, right? What they do is they get an elephant. Mm. And when it's a baby, they put a peg in the ground and a chain yeah. on its leg. And the baby can't move. And mm -hmm. it gets conditioned that it can't move. Yeah. And then if you go to a circus now, you see a massive elephant and it's still got a little peg in the ground. Now the elephant could just lift its leg up and rip that peg out and do what yeah. it likes. Yeah. But because it's being conditioned, it doesn't believe it can do it. So it stands there and just, in that prison. And it's almost like a lot of people are stuck in their mental prison. Well, they've got a limiting belief. That's what it is, the limiting belief. And what's really important, and actually, we're gonna be talking to a Canadian friend of mine next week. Cool. And we're gonna be talking about limiting beliefs and everything else like that. All right, I, awesome. I invite him to the podcast because he's really good when it comes to belief. And he was homeless at one stage. Wow. And he changed the limiting beliefs and he became very successful. 
And I think that it's very important for people to work in their beliefs and get out of their comfort zone. And really, you know, you need to believe in yourself. Absolutely. First, before you do anything else. And I think that's what holds most people back. Totally. Not believing in themselves. But, um, you know, I think what we're going to do is I really want to get our podcast to really help people mm. realise their potential and get more prosperity. And if we yeah. can just help the people watching this become more successful and live a better life, oh, we've done our job. Definitely. But you know I mean? on another um, note on that, we're not going to be like the secret and it's not going to be all like, oh, manifest or whatever. We're actually going to give you practical, real-life steps that you can take and exactly. follow exactly. to get the results. But the beginning part is the belief. We're going to work on that. But once you've got the belief, without the practical stuff, without massive action there's nothing it doesn't matter yeah you know you can you can sit there and believe you're a property investor but if you don't invest in property <laughs> if you don't actually you know save up your deposit and work towards getting an investment then look, it's not going to appear out of nowhere the fact of it is i mean it's not easy no it's and not. a lot of people you know and a lot of people don't get that see the thing is it's not easy it's, and it's hard. not going to happen overnight it's hard it's hard and yeah. when i started investing it was difficult it wasn't easy mm. but the fact of it is some things in life aren't easy, but they're really worthwhile. Totally. And one of the best things I've did that created this lifestyle and life for me is investing. I was very fortunate. I mean, I made a lot of mistakes along the beginning, mm -hmm. but then I went on a bit of a journey and found out exactly how to do it. And I retired by 37. Now, funny enough, I could have retired earlier. I just didn't realize. Wow. But I was at work and I got pissed off and then, yeah. Then I worked out that I was making this like, money. Hey, I don't actually have to be here. <laughs> it was it was amazing that I actually mm. gave my business away, yeah. closed my business down, and I was making more money not working. Yeah. Right, and it was just right. a mindset shift. I want to teach people this because a lot of people, if you get caught up in the old mindset, yeah. you don't. Sometimes you don't realize yeah. what's happening. And I was very fortunate that I realized, and it was all because one of my managers stole some stuff off me, which got me a little bit angry. Very angry actually, and, but it was good. It really changed my mindset. But the thing is, I was from working seven days a week, mm. being stressed out, probably long hours, really long hours, yeah. and trying to make all this money to pay for the yeah. staff and yeah. this whole engine. Yeah. To living on the beach, getting up whenever mm. I wanted to, totally, and having one hundred eighty thousand dollars a year without getting out of bed, mm. coming in, and allowing me to do whatever I wanted to do. Now, that was a huge shift. Mm. Best thing ever. Loved it. You know what I mean? And then I had a lot of fun. I partied, I traveled, I did all that sort of stuff. And I suppose now, you know, I'm finding purpose in my life. And it gave me a chance to find purpose. And my purpose is to help everyone else do the same. Totally. Because mm -hmm. I really enjoy this. I love helping people. Yeah. And I love spreading the real truth and the good news. And people, you know, they don't want to hear about the good news I'm in the media, right? They want to hear about the bad news. And I'm telling you, it's good news, you know? If you just catch this wave, it's fantastic. Totally. So we're gonna have a lot of fun doing this. Absolutely. It's gonna be great. And I think maybe on the next podcast we can talk about um, assets and liabilities because I think it would be good to start off people's education. Well, look, what if what? This journey. Why don't I talk to people about our meeting? Because we met Robert Kiyosaki and Kim Kiyosaki. Yeah, yeah. And you had a really good special moment with Kim, and I um, I got to talk to Robert and everything else like that. Yeah, so it's it pretty awesome. cool. You know, I feel like we're sort of like the Australian younger <laughs> versions. <laughs> It's, it's really interesting. Um, yeah, I, I've had a very similar journey, the, almost identical to Kim Kiyosaki with getting the whole mindset right first and understanding the fundamentals about assets and liabilities. And then, you know, always knowing that I, I wanted to invest and I wanted to be in that investors column and create wealth and have it coming in while I don't have to work for it. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're exceptionally bright. You're exceptionally smart. And Thank you've you. read Robert Kiyosaki's book. And then Absolutely, you read, you read yeah. my book as well, which yeah, touched on it. Totally. And I think yeah. that really... Because when well, I first met Rich you, I gave Dad, Poor Dad is probably what has set me up for this success that I've had. And it's really got me on the right path. Because if I don't have that fundamental education about understanding, you know, assets and liabilities, then I wouldn't have never considered investing and I would have never you know, known it to be a possibility, really. I think we need to talk about that. Yeah, but I think uh, we might need a whiteboard for the next, next one. That's why I'm saying. So on the next episode, I think we're going to talk Daughter about... From home, um, the whiteboard. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, assets and liabilities, those sorts of things. Just giving you 
the really um, beginning of how you can set yourself up to right, become right an idea, investor. Great idea. Let's talk about that and then we'll talk about yeah. mindset the podcast after. Yeah, yeah. So what we want to do is we want to take you on a journey, mm-hmm. right? And we've given you the big picture here today, today yeah. about the massive boom ahead. And I'm writing a book about this at the moment. But what I want to do is we want to take you on a journey and give it to you step by step. Totally, and yeah. The, the, the thousand, what is it, the thousand mile journey starts with one step. Yeah, that's and, right. And you know, yeah. if you watch this episode and if you're a little bit motivated about the massive prosperity you're going to get in the future, it's great because it's pretty exciting. And totally. we're going to take you on this journey and really help you. And uh, it's going to be great. Now, where can you find us? Well, there's, two, pla- there's two places you can find us, okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. One place you can find us is we've got a Facebook group, a private little group. and. Mm-hmm. I want to share it with our podcasting audience. It's called Positive Property Club. Mm-hmm. And what we do is we give, we've got a, a big bunch of like-minded investors there yeah. that we talk about property and prosperity and it works really well. We've helped a lot of people there and it's really good to have a community of like-minded people that help you. Yeah. And obviously, then there's also a website, Positive Property Solutions. Solution. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how to say it. Positive <laughs> Property Solution. PositivePropertySolution.com.au yeah, And... Um, that's a good place. And I think another good place to start is if you Google Freedom Through Property. Yeah, jump on Amazon. Amazon, um, jump on download Amazon. Download George's book, Freedom Through Property. Um, second book that I've read that has helped me understand that property is the vehicle for wealth creation, particularly in Australia. And mm. that's gonna help you get ahead the most out of anything you could ever invest in. Absolutely. So look, it's been fun, it's been good. And you know, please stick with us. Join us in the next episode because we're going to have a really good time. It's going to be awesome. Look forward to talking more about property and helping everyone get started and create freedom through property. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.